I want. Today, we're going to add a new feature to Taste the Code Toolbox, particularly to the YouTube site tool. And we're currently, we're just getting all the data from the date where the channel was created. And now we're going to add uh, a field to the API where you can specify from when to when you want this to happen. Uh, this was a request from one of my viewers. So let's get started and uh, build it. First, we'll need to navigate to the controller. And let's open the project window. And within we have the standard Laravel configuration uh, where we have the controllers. Uh, in this case, it's just basically a single controller that uh, shows everything connected to YouTube site. And if we open it, um, we have, there is a, just a single API route that's connected. Um, hold on, let me show you that. If you go to the routes, uh, and this is the API, we only have one route set where we pass on the GUI of the channel that was generated and it's directed to the YouTube site controller at API index. Now let's go to the, that controller and search for the API index. Here it is. Uh, what's happening there is that we connect to the Google client, we refresh the tokens, and then we call the API to get the, to get the analytics. And if we go inside, we'll see that it's here that we actually specify the date from when and until when uh, all the data is collected. So basically what we're going to do is extract those two variables and be able to set them uh, specifically for each of the requests. So that's, let's start with that. Um, the plan is to add two more variables here. Uh, let's give it some space. And those two variables will be optional. So the first one is um, we can add them as carbon variables. So the first, first one will be start date. We can make the variable to be nullable, and we can say that it will be null by default. And the second one will be end date. Okay, um, let's update the PHP comment. Okay, so now. Um, we can add a condition if not start date. It's gonna basically mean if the start date is not uh, set, we can set the start date to be what is currently uh, being set. And this will give us the carbon instance that we uh, get returned from the channel. And here we can add the start date. And basically we're gonna do exactly the same thing, but now with the end date. Uh, where now we're gonna get the current So what's basically going to happen is if we have gonna, uh, set a start date, then we're going to use that. But if we don't have a start date connected, then we're going to use the channel published, eight, uh, published at date that we take from the APIs. And the same thing happens for the end date. If we don't have it set, then we're going to use the current, uh, current date value for that. Let's see now if um, we go into Postman. 
this should theoretically remain the same okay and but still we haven't got a way how we can send uh, these parameters to the request so let's get back there and figure out where this one is used uh, okay this is the index we don't need that we want this is for the ui we want to show um, the full analytics all the time there and here are we back in the API um, analytics API data what we can say is here and uh, since we have them as nullable we can omit them but we can also send them as null values and what we can do is set um, start date Uh, if I can spell that correct, will be request. And as you can see, first we have the key, and then we have the default value that uh, we can set if the key is not uh, provided. I'll set this to, again, start date. And then I'll set the default value of null. And I'll repeat the same for the end date. And now I'll be able to get these two values from the request. The one thing that I'm going to change for now is that I it had this as a carbon, but I'll convert this to strings and I'll tell you why. So here, if it's set and it's something different, <clears throat> now I'm going to try and make it as a as carbon instance. Let's do this for now, where we're going to set the start date now to be carbon uh, parse and we're gonna get the uh, start date value and let's do the same for the end date as well and date and end date here so we basically switched um, this to use the trend pro strings provided. So what we can do is just pass them on and now whenever this is being set we can send it uh, to the request and let's see that in Postman and yes as you can see now i don't have the 700 something subscribers that i had before but i have the 45 and this is more or less uh, true as you can see i've gained for uh, i've gained 45 but nine of them left uh, they didn't like the channel so i'm now currently with 36 subscribers so and if we remove that we'll see that that will go uh, to what I had before. Um, what I want to try now is what's what's gonna happen if I don't send something of value, and that's an exception because now uh, Carbon tries to parse that as a date, and that obviously is not a date. So let's go and fix that. Uh, uh, we know that. Carbon will uh, start, uh, will parse the date, and what we can do. I'm not sure if Carbon has any um, any validation. If uh, we can, uh, let's. The basic way is if we can add a try catch block. So any exception. It's gonna happen um, do we want to
to log it? Not really. Uh, do we want to do anything else? No, but probably we can um, default uh, to the channel publish date. And let's do the same here. And here, as before, we're gonna default to the current end date. This way, we're sure that we are always passing date to the API, uh, which generally is a good thing. So let's see. And yes, we have we have the current views. Start date was not recognized as a date. Uh, let's go back. Um, the interesting thing here is that we now have a way of adding uh, custom parameters that are uh, mm -hmm. quite uh, mm -hmm. descriptive. Uh, for example, uh, we can say two weeks ago. And this is a feature that Carbon will now parse that date uh, into a valid date time string and par parse that to the um, to the API. Uh, let's try the same for the end date. Um, let's see, since my channel was started in 2017, let's see how many um, subscribers I've got up until uh, 1st of January uh, in 2018. Okay, so 42 and I haven't lost any. Uh, that's a success. Let's see now up until 2019. And that looks okay. So currently if we uh, supply both of them, I'll Use 2018 till 2019. So this will basically return me all the subscribers that I had, that I've uh, all the data that I've collected from uh, the entire of 2018. That's 165 subscribers. I had 14,390 views. Uh, and 26,875 minutes watched. And we can do the same for 2020. And this is where I got most of the subscribers because I was most active. So that's about it. I'll be committing this code to the GitHub rep repository if you want to take a look at yourself. The YouTube site application is open source, so you can gain access to uh, all of this code on my GitHub repository. The link will be down in the description. If you have any suggestions for improving it, uh, adding something, or if you see some issue with the code that I've ha I have here, then uh, feel free to uh, suggest any improvements, and I'll be glad to look at the merge request. Um, thank you for watching, and I'll see you guys in the next one.